Good evening, Brazos Valley Keg Sports coming to you on the road all week from here at SEC Media Days in Hoover, Alabama with Mike Lucas. As always, I'm Justin Wooder. Talking season is here, and boy, it just feels good to be back because, of course, last year, like many things, COVID-19 canceled this event. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. Some things are still restricted, but the good news is Justin and I are here until Friday to bring you the best sights and sounds possible. LSU, Florida, South Carolina kick things off for us today, and we'll have plenty of Tiger talk in just a little bit. But let's start with A&M. Yes, the Aggies do not take the podium here until Wednesday, but we do have some A&M news for you. In addition to talking season, it's preseason award time. Star running back Isaiah Spiller has been named to the Maxwell Award preseason watch list. The Maxwell is given each year to the college football player of the year. The soon-to-be junior finished the 2020 campaign third in the SEC in rushing at just over 103 yards per game. In two seasons so far in Aggieland, Spiller has racked up over 1,980 rushing yards to go with 19 touchdowns, all while averaging over five and a half yards per carry. The Aggies also have a player in the preseason discussion for Defensive Player of the Year. The Marvin Leal, the All-American junior defensive lineman, is on the preseason generic watch list. The future first-round NFL draft pick led A&M with eight quarterback hurries last season and finished fifth on the team with 37 tackles. The sack numbers weren't necessarily there in his first two seasons on campus, but expect those to skyrocket in 2021. Defensive coordinator Mike Elko hopes those numbers go way up in terms of taking down the quarterback. Now, don't forget, at the very top, AM's Jimbo Fisher is one of 17 coaches on the Dodd Trophy preseason award watch list, so pretty impressive for Coach Fisher. Now, again, he'll be here on Wednesday along with Lee Allen, Kenyon Green. But before that, over the weekend, Fisher was busy in San Antonio giving insight to hundreds of Texas high school football coaches. The Aggie $75 million man was the offensive keynote speaker at the Coaches Association this weekend, but it was his take on practice that resonated the most. Fisher continues to stress the importance of going through practice reps in game speed to help prepare his players for pressure situations. It's a position A&M knows a thing or two about, playing 13 one-score games in the last three seasons alone. Man, that's a lot, but the good news is Fisher has proven he can win those tight games too. The Aggies are 9-4 in one-score contests since Fisher took over in 2018, and he believes that's a direct result of how his team practices. Pressure is a privilege. If you can't have pressure, that means probably what you're doing doesn't mean anything. And the job you're doing doesn't mean anything. Or the games you're playing don't mean anything. You handle it in practice. You've got to create pressure in practice. A play can mean totally different things in each situation based on what's built into it. And if they don't take themselves there mentally, they're never going to become the players they can be, and you're never going to become the team you can be. One of those nine wins in games decided by one score or less, of course, came in 2018. That seven overtime thriller over LSU at Kyle Field. In fact, that was AM's first victory over the Tigers since joining the SEC, massive to say the least. Yeah, 2019 didn't go their way. Joe Burrow and company smoked AM, but they smoked literally everybody that season. The Aggies got their revenge in 2020, though, when they beat the Bayou Bengals by two scores at Kyle Field. Yeah, so now in pretty incredible fashion, Fisher and A&M have a chance to win three of four over LSU in 2021. That victory in 2018, if you remember, snapped a seven-game losing skid to the Tigers, and it was the Ag's first win over them since way back in 1995. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but does A&M have LSU's number now? Maybe. And are the Aggies the second favorite in the West behind Bama? The arrow is definitely pointed towards the Aggies, but Coach O and company aren't ready to give them too much credit just yet. He's done a good job. He really has done a good job. You know, A&M's a good school. You can attract all the talent you want right there in the Houston area. The guy's a good coach. He's won a championship. He's done a good job. Okay, those weren't the exact answers we were looking for, but you can take that how you want. Let's move on to South Carolina now, a team the Yankees have absolutely dominated since joining the SEC. How about seven wins in a row over the Gamecocks? Head coach Shane Beamer, though, now, who comes over from Oklahoma, has plans to change that. The list of guys Mike Beamer has coached under is just incredible. For A&M's sake, let's hope he doesn't bring that Oklahoma offense to Columbia with him. The Gamecocks may not have the wins to back up any smack talk, but they're feeling confident about their upcoming matchup 
with the Aggies. I feel like we can definitely beat any team and compete with any team in the SEC or nationally. So um, I feel like definitely we, we to, this year will be the year we beat them. They've got great players, but what they do, they're, they're really good at what they do. Obviously, he's a great offensive coach, and, and you see that. I think he does a great job of, of – uh, uh, playing to his personnel and the strengths of what they have offensively and defensively. I mean, they're very, very disruptive on, on defense and, and tough to prepare for. That's pretty much the scoop here from day one at SEC Midi Days. In addition for LSU, they do have a quarterback battle ongoing, so we'll see how that plays out between Brennan and Johnson. Tomorrow, more fun, right? Three teams from the East we don't really care about and Ole Miss, and we'll see you all then.